We got people flooding in pretty dang quick. Man, you got you a cold beverage right there. <laughs> Yo, I need it after today. You and me both. I need one. All right, everybody. Everybody's hopping on. Um, Y'all will be able to see that there is a webinar chat right now. So y'all have questions for Jermaine, feel free to pop them in there. I'll be able to see them. Um, so you can kind of hop in there and answer as we roll. And we'll wait just a, another minute or two before we get rolling in hot. We've got a good amount of paper on here tonight. Got John Taylor from Ohio, Wisconsin on here tonight too. So yeah, if everybody wants to just chime in and let us know where everyone is from. All right. All right, Jermaine. Got chat up. We got chat up, man. I can see everybody where everybody's coming in from. All right. You ready to get this thing rolling, Jermaine? I am. All right, y'all. Well, we want to welcome y'all tonight to our hunt class for calling like a champ. We've got Mr. Jermaine Hodge on here tonight, and uh, we're going to have ourselves a good one tonight. We're going to be teaching y'all. Jermaine's going to be teaching y'all uh, some elk calling stuff. We know a lot of y'all, a lot of our audience, a lot of y'all are some whitetail guys, Midwest, Eastern guys. Y'all like to go out west to chase after some elk so jermaine's gonna bring out some good stuff tonight but before we get rolling with it a little bit about myself my name's will cooper um podcast host for hunt stand if y'all listen to hunt stands make your mark podcast digital creator content creator for hunt stand and thanks to jermaine i'm an elk hunter so uh, got to shoot my first elk with jermaine you can see this picture right here we uh what do we do kill two elk in two days, and we packed out for three days straight, right? Correct. Yeah, a lot of work, but uh, we we got it done, and we got it done pretty fast. Um, fortunate enough that that we got onto some of those bulls really early, before uh, some of the other hunters in the area got into them. So, um, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. That that was uh, that was awesome. I, I promise you that. Uh, we got a little bit of glitch right there not bad just a little bit all right Telling everybody to turn the Wi-Fi off right now. Sure <laughs> you got to get all the cameras up. I apologize. I apologize ahead of time. We got some storms moving through here, uh, so if it does glitch, it's probably more so for the fact that uh, we're on. We're all on the Zoom meeting together, and that these storms are rolling through too as well. Well, if you hop off, if something happens because of storms, I guess people are going to have to listen to uh, me try to teach them some calling. I'm not sure if they're going to want that, but uh, we'll just keep rolling, man. We're just going to rolling through it. So before we get into it, just want to let y'all know real quick, HuntStand is the number one hunting and land management app. Been around for some time now, primarily been whitetail focused and uh not sure we've kind of mentioned this much before, but just to drop a little hint, we do have um, some new things coming down the pike for Hunt Stand fairly soon. And um, for everybody tonight that's going out west, we do have some western features that we're going to be dropping fairly quick. So that's all I'm going to let you know. Y'all will be seeing that soon in the future. Um, but tonight we got our main man, Jermaine Hodge, on here. Uh, Jermaine and I met couple of years ago at an elk shape camp um, we just kind of hit it off real quick uh, I used to be a coach in my past life and you know of course have a love of elk hunting so Jermaine and I hit it off real quick and uh, 
that's where I met him. And for those of y'all that don't know Jermaine, I'm gonna let him tell tell all about himself in a little bit. But Jermaine is a world elk calling champion. He's a content creator himself. He's got some videos already up on YouTube. So if y'all want to watch those, you can see those. Uh, retired Army vet. He's been U.S. Army women's world class athlete program wrestling coach. Of course, the man's a bona fide elk hunter, father, husband, brother, and my friend. So, Jermaine, I'm going to quit talking. I'm just going to let you take it from here, brother. Ah, ah. Give us a bugle. We got it figured out, folks. All right. Aha. And I want to, uh, let me see. I want to cut on. I think we're good, oh. man. Okay. Right. I don't have to see myself. Uh, I just wanted to see where, yep, yeah, that's that's the view I want. All okay. right, dude. All, All right. right. I, apologize. I apologize, everybody. Um, Hopefully everybody can hear me. If you can hit me, give uh, Will a thumbs up and we're good to go and we'll continue on. All good, man. Everybody's good to go. Everybody's happy. And just a reminder, just for sticking with us through some of the technical stuff, I'll be emailing a code to you guys just to get you a, a free year of Hunt Stamp Pro Whitetail. So thanks for sticking with us. Jermaine, it's on you, man. Okay. Um, so basically what, I, uh, what, what we're going to cover over is the basic sounds of using your diaphragm and the different tools that uh, we're going to use throughout the month of September, October, maybe even going into late uh, late November, because you, you got to remember that elk, they communicate year in and year out. And uh, the minute that you leave your calls at home, you don't know unless you do something. And I'm going to give you a quick story. And, and I know I'm going to go down a lot of rabbit holes, but what I will tell you is that uh, even though you think it might be a fourth season rifle tag, they still talk. And I, I'll give you a quick example. I had a, a cow tag for uh, North Northwest Colorado and I had a cow tag and my son jumps out. He says, I want to call, I want to call dad. And it was during the Thanksgiving time frame when they had that, that late season, uh, fourth season rifle tag during, uh, during that Thanksgiving time frame. Anyways, my son gets out of the vehicle and he, he, he throws out some cow sounds and, and, and a bull sound. And uh, I had left my bugle tube, but I didn't leave my cow my, my, my open reads and my, uh, my diaphragms. So I, I grabbed his bugle tube and lo and behold, we had a bull answer November 25th or 24th or whenever Thanksgiving is. And we had a bull sound off and we, we head that direction just to see if that bull had some cows with him and he had a cow with him and boom, the hunt was over with, within a matter of a couple of minutes. So, uh, never leave your calls at home number one and always take them with you because you really don't know unless you're you're calling anyways uh is the audio good will okay we're all good man we got you loud and clear okay and then i'm gonna break down like uh some of these calls with whether it's open read or whether it's uh you know for for people that don't know how to use any of that stuff uh the easy sucker and diaphragms and other tools that can possibly be used during during elk season so if you're a rifle hunter or you're you know just a general uh archery hunter we're gonna, we're gonna cover it all and then if you have questions at the very end please ask me and, and i'll do my best to my ability to answer all those uh those those questions um, if you hit to the next slide, Will, and then we'll just keep moving on. So a basic, so your, your, your diaphragm, can you see me, Will? Okay. So your basic diaphragm consists of three different things. Now, whether you have a dome on the top of that, 
or you just have a, um, a flat read, it still consists of three different things. And within those three th different things, you have your tape that's on the outside, you have your frame, and then you have your latex. And with that being said, that latex always needs to be pointed to the outside of your voice. Like if, you're, if I'm yelling at somebody, so it needs to be pointed to the outside. And what I'm doing with that call is I'm seating it to the top of my mouth. Now, remember, all these calls can be done with open reads or internal reads or something of that nature. You just won't be able to make a realistic sound that you can get out of a diaphragm. That's why I really wanted to start with a diaphragm. So your first thing is, is your tape. And that tape needs to be seated at the top of your mouth with a good seal. And what I mean by that is everybody's roof of their palate is a lot different than everybody else's, right? Some people have narrow palate plates and some people have deep palate plates. So you have to kind of play around with that. And what I want is that, that tape to seal to the top of my mouth. And I'm going to use the curvature of my hand. And if you just make a little arch with your hand, that's about what that palate plate looks like. And that palate plate, that tape is going to sit to the top of your, your, your mouth. And you want a good seal. So if you get like, you know, you've, you've been trying to uh, master these diaphragms and you, 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 you just can't get it done, it's probably because it's not sealed right. And what I mean by that is when I put this call to the top of my mouth, I want it to seal all the way around because if you don't get it sealed, you'll get this hissing sound. Now, for most people, I tell them, hey, record yourself while you're, you're using these diaphragms. And if you hear that hissing sound, it's because it's not sealed properly. Now, as I said before, most people have different palate plates. And if your palate plate is narrow and shallow, you probably want to trim about an eighth of an inch of that tape at a time. Do not trim more than that. And trim it all the way around trying to keep the same curvature that it originally is in. And then put it back to the top of your mouth, record yourself again, and, and see if you hear that hissing sound. Now, with that being said, I know it's a little crazy, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you guys. Uh, Will, you said you could see, it, see me pretty good. So, with that being said, I'm going to show you the top of my palate plate, and I'm going to show you what that call should look like on the top of your palate plate. It should seal to the top of your mouth. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to fall. I mean, uh, sh it shouldn't fall off. It should stick to the top of your mouth. And if it doesn't stick to the top of your mouth, once again, trim about an eighth of an inch off that palette plate. I mean, that tape. So you can get, you can get it to stick to the top of your mouth. Now, going from that point on, it's all about making, like, I tell everybody, Try to make that mosquito sound. Eee! It's like that mosquito that's in your ear. You want to make that mosquito sound because that's the beginning of all sounds. If I can make that mosquito sound, don't worry about, you know, the, the voice control or anything to go with that. Just make sure that you can make that mosquito sound. And it kind of sounds like this. And that's that little mosquito that's sitting in your ear. Could you hear me, hear, hear me good, Will, on that one? Okay. So you, you make that mosquito sound, and that's the beginning stages of trying to make that cow sound and, or those calf sounds. Uh, so once again, to go back over the basics of those sounds, you have your tape, you have your frame, you have dome or flat, and you have your latex. And very, very important that you know the basics of a diaphragm. And I'll talk about the other calls as I get into it, but the basics 
the basics of a diaphragm are tape, frame, and latex. Can you get to the next slide? Okay, now as we get into some of these calls, there's a lot of different calls that you can use, uh, especially for people that do not, they have a gag reflex and they cannot use a diaphragm. You have, I mean, there's a lot of different calling, you know, uh, companies out there that make a lot of different things. Uh, of course, I'm just going to talk about Phelps, but uh, there's there's a lot of companies out there that make a lot of great calls. Uh, so if you can't use a diaphragm, nor could you use a, a open read, they make some calls like your Hoochie Mama from Primo's, um, the Easy Sucker from Phelps, and a lot of other different ones out there. And they, they basically do the same thing. They have a built-in like system that takes the frame of your your call your diaphragm and they put it in inside so you don't gag or anything with that uh being said you 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 also have you know bugling tubes that you know you have the terminate i mean i cut my teeth on like using like the terminator back in the day uh where they had that that blue latex that set set over that so I can make that location bugle. You have the Easy Bugler from Phelps. And uh, shoot, I think Slayer has a couple of them out there too as well. So there's a lot of systems out there that you can use to help you uh, capitalize on what, what, what I'm going to talk about today. So with that being said, most of those calls, and I'm going to break this, uh, this Easy Sucker open so you guys can see it. And... All it is, is the same diaphragm, that same frame, that same frame that, that I talked about when we talk about a diaphragm, that same frame just built into something that makes it a lot easier and user friendly. Now, can you make the same sounds out of these calls? You can. They just don't sound as realistic as a diaphragm, in my opinion. But let me let me just demo this uh, easy sucker. It makes that calf and cow sound that you might need. And so, if you can't use a diaphragm, these different tools are awesome. Let me go into the open read, and, and, and on that picture, and hopefully everybody can see that picture, those open reads usually come with a castration ring, and that castration ring sits over, and it usually is a stopping point, and it goes over those, those open reads to give you that stopping point. So when, you, when, when you're utilizing these open reads, you just push your lips, and it's all lip pressure, right? So the easy sucker is done basically with tooth pressure and these open reads are done with lip pressure so all I'm doing is utilizing my lip with with air pressure going across those and those those castration rings sit basically right over the reed and by all means I tell everybody to to keep those those castration rings on it but I I cut my teeth on utilizing um, open reads and I found that when I took those castration rings off, I was able to utilize my lips throughout the whole top of that reed. And let me break this open reed down for you. These open reeds are, they could be a little tricky, especially during like uh, really, really cold or, or early mornings. And because there's a lot of saliva that is you know that that you you exhale and it goes over this reed and sometimes those reeds are stick and you'll have to clean them off so you make those perfect sounds and by all means you really don't have to be perfect in the woods by no means do you have to sound like me to 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 you know be successful in the elk woods but what i will tell you is that the better you can sound separate yourself especially when you you're you're, you're running like those otc units or those general units and you have a lot of hunters so sometimes you'll have to clean those the bottom of that reed off and usually I, I use my shirt and I clean it off 
and then I can make those perfect sounds. But it's all lip pressure, and I'm going to show you with my lips. The less pressure you use, the better they sound. And as I said before, I take that castration ring off, but that's me. And understand, if you take that castration ring off, you better hide this because you could bend that reed and it won't sound the same. So usually I keep an open reed inside my vinyl harness, but I take the, the, the part of the open reed and I face it towards me so it doesn't get hung on anything. So once again... My lips are causing the pressure, I mean, causing the pressure, and I'm just blowing across that sound, and it kind of sounds like this. Hopefully, you can hear that, Will. Loud and clear, dude. And then, and then if you, if, if, if uh, you're trying to make calf sounds, they make uh, smaller ones that make very, very good calf sounds. And it's the same concept. It's a reed built into, you know, a dome thing, and it spits out that same frame. And what I like about what I like about open reeds is they have that nasally sound. And a lot of times when I can't get a bull to sound off or or spark off, and I know they're in the area, I will break out my open reed, and they will go nuts. They will go nuts. But Understanding this, because you'll, you'll, you'll get this a lot. Uh, you'll get people saying, I don't know how to use open reeds and I sound like a dying duck. And, and, and sometimes what they're doing is they're causing too much pressure on the, 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 the reed. And it kind of sounds like this. <coughs> and th that's that. That's, that's too much pressure. So... What I want to do is lighten up the pressure with my lips and just blow across the reed. So very light with my lips. And that makes that more realistic sound. So once again, you have a lot of different tools out there that you can utilize, especially if you can't utilize a diaphragm. Now, another favorite for a lot of people that can't use diaphragms is like an easy bugler or those uh, primos reeds or something that of that nature. And if you look, it's the same concept. It's just a reed or a plastic thing that goes over there. But all you're doing is using your lips instead of your tongue pressure. And you're, 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 putting, you're putting pressure on that reed as you blow air across that reed. And these things are designed to, to be as realistic as you can. Uh, but I will say they just don't sound as similar as a diaphragm. But I will tell you a quick story. Um, back in my young days, I used to use open reeds. And I, I wasn't very good with a diaphragm at the time. And... What I would, I, I, I'd make some good cow sounds, but I could not bugle with a diaphragm. And I would use that Primos, uh, the, the, the Terminator, and I'd locate bugle. And then I would, when he'd bugle back, then I would go in and I'd seal the deal with my open reeds. I was very successful three, four years, and I still would do the same thing if it, if that's the only tools that I had. Um, but. If you can master that diaphragm, you're gonna take yourself from uh, from A level to 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 Z, and and just because you'll you'll separate yourself or around the sounds that you can make with the diaphragm versus some of these other tools that we'll talk about throughout the seminar, um, and and believe me, you could be very, very successful in the woods with just using an open reed or easy sucker or something like uh, easy bugler getting out there. So I just want to get you all guys familiar with some of the tools. And the same goes for like Primos, you know, they, they sold a, uh, millions of them, millions of the Hoochie Mamas. And the, it sounds realistic. It's, it's, it's not too far off of some of those cow and calf sounds. So um, whatever, you, whatever you like and fits your needs, 
by all means, go out and grab those tools and practice with them. I know we're only a few weeks and some of some of the seasons have already started, but uh, the, the more you practice, the better you'll be. If you can go to the next slide, Will. You got your phone plugged in, right? Uh, I will. <laughs> One second. I think I'm good. I'm I'm at sixty percent. It ain't it ain't gonna drain that far. And if it gets a little low, give me a second and I'll plug it up. But no, it's at sixty percent, so we're good to go. Um, hey, listen. You know, one of the most common sounds that you're gonna hear in the woods is especially when you're around uh, a herd of elk is your calf sounds and i relate this I, I like to try to humanize all this and the reason why i like to humanize this is because we have to make it realistic as possible and those those calves are the noisiest elk in the woods you would think you know you hear cat i mean you hear cow sounds you hear bull sounds but, but if you got a bunch of calves within that herd they are like that kid and I, I, I think I could, you know, vouch for a lot of people that have kids and you've taken that long trip down the road and they're sitting in the back seat. And I'm talking about two, three, four hours plus drive. And that's that kid in the back of your seat. I mean, the back seat talking about, Dad, Mom, are we there yet? Are we there yet? It's unbelievable how much they talk. And then as they get older, they have you know, computer systems and stuff like that, and they get a little quiet, right? But relate yourself to to what those elk are doing out there in the woods and understand that kids love to talk, especially around that age, you know, when they, they start talking to whatever, you know, one, two, three, to, to about, you know, eight, nine years old when they're, they're they have a bunch of questions. I have a bunch of questions and usually that hits right around that I don't know five to eight years old in my opinion that's that kid talking and if you're in the elk woods and, and you've been out there and maybe you've heard this or not and kids they just they're, they're just loud and understanding that mosquito sound and then taking that a little bit further now Every sound derives off of a cow sound. Every elk sound derives off a cow sound. And all the calf sound is, is a little mo less mature sound. And that's that kid in the background talking about, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And it kind of sounds like this. And that's that kid saying, Mom, Dad, I got to pee. Mom, can we eat? But to get to that point, you got to take that mosquito sound and elongate it just a little bit. And going back to what I started from the beginning, after you make that mosquito sound, you're just going to elongate that a little bit and then drop it off. So I want to take that cow sound and we're going to talk about cow sounds in a minute, but I want to take that cow sound and I want to chop it in half. And that cow sound sounds like this with the mosquito sound. That's that mosquito sound. And then I'm going to drop it off at the end for cow sound. And then I'm going to chop that sound in half with a little less maturity sound to get that calf sound. Sounds like this. And once again, that's that kid in the back seat. Your kid that just says, Mom, uh, how do you do this? Uh, Dad, uh, can we stop for some food? But when you hear this in the woods, they don't stop. And I want to give you a, 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 a scenario slash uh, metaphor. Is if you was taking your kid 
down the road and there was an amazing playground park. And there was a bunch of kids out there at the playground. And their mom and dad are out there sitting watching them swing and play. What do you think the kid in the back seat is going to say? They're going to say, Mom, can we stop at the park? Hey, can we? Can we play with them? And the reason why I say this is because it can be one of the most deadly sounds in the woods. Remember this. <clears throat> if, if mom and dad are around and the kid takes off and goes to another kid, they usually have their eyes on the kid or they walk over to their kids. So I want to give you a story real quick. Uh, and I said, I, I, I'm going to go down a lot of rabbit holes. I want to give you a story real quick because this, this happened to me in my younger elk hunting career. And it didn't dawn on me until later. I had, um, I had ran into some guys that were muzzleloader hunting. I think it was like my third year hunting and, uh, hunting elk. And, uh, lo and behold, I, I, I I've been successful year in and year out, but, uh, it took me it took me a long time to kind of figure out like what are they saying why are they saying it and what are they doing when they say it and I realized like calf sounds could be super deadly especially when you're talking to a, a herd of elk that have a few calves in it and I ran into some muzzleloaders and they said yeah, we seen a 380 bull. And at that point in my career, I was like, I have never seen a 380 bull on the hoof. I said, he's got to be lying. So I went back to camp that that evening uh, after that hunt. And I was scratching my head thinking, man, what if he wasn't lying? Should I, I should really probably go check that area. And even though it had some pressure, there was a lot of elk in that area. And he was telling me that that bull had gotten beat up by a younger bull that was a little smaller than him that took most of that herd away from him. And so I, I went in there early in the morning. I said, man, the heck with this. I'm going to go check this. And I went in there. And as I'm making my way up, I wanted to get to a certain point because I knew where those elk were going to be at that, at that morning. I knew where they were going to be. And where they were going to be on that particular mountain. So I went in there and I, I hit this little drainage and I, I bugled down in that drain. I, first of all, let me tell you something. There, there's a workup to this. And this is why we start off with calf sounds. But there's a workup to this. And I, I calf sound and I cow sound and then I location bugle. But nothing was in that drainage. And remember at the very end of the day, you don't want to go in the woods just yelling at everybody. And I'm going to repeat this later on when we get into to location bugles. But I start off with your calf sounds. Once again, those calf sounds are cow sounds just cut in half. That doesn't sound as mature. And I'm going to make that sound again. And that's that kid in the back. Mom, are we there yet? Or... Mom, can we play at the park? And so I, I, I do all this into this drainage and nothing sounds off. So then I move 500 yards side hill to the left. And I do this again. 500 yards from where I originally sounded off to another location, just 500 yards side hill. And I make that calf sound. And that calf sound made another kid sound off. And that kid was another calf. Well, the calf sounds off. Mom sounds off. And then I get a location, I mean, a little growly bugle from another bull. And I said, oh, my God, here it comes. I said, you need to get ready because it sounds like the kid wants to play with another kid. So I bring, I bring the whole herd, which was only five elk in this herd, this little mini herd, 
uh, that branched off from that other bigger herd, I bring that kid to the playground. And sure enough, the calf shows up, and then mom shows up. And as I said before, usually mom and dad are not too far behind them because they want to pay attention to the kid because we know that if we're not watching our kids, even humanize this, even today's society, if you're not watching your kid or there for your kid or have other people around your kid, things could happen to your kid. And the last thing you want is something to happen to yours. So mom comes and follows. Well, some more cows come in. Three more cows come in with that one calf. And lo and behold, dad follows. And this is during that September heat of the rut. And this bull shows up and he's swinging his head through the woods. And I should have been ready at full draw at that point, but I was only 10 yards from them. So I wasn't a seasoned hunter like I am now. And I would, if I would have known better, I would have been ready for that situation. So going back to that calf sound, sometimes when you work in a herd, those calf sounds could be the most deadly sounds, but they are a little cut in half cow sounds. And that's that less mature sound. And it kind of sounds like this again. One more story, and I'm not going to hold you off on stories, but one more story. We was behind camp, probably about a mile and a half where we were camping, and my wife had a tag. And I got into uh, some bulls back there. So I said, look, my wife just got up here. I'm going to start off with this hunt. It's going to be an easy hunt, nothing hard. We're going to ease into this. And I get over there, and I start off with calf sounds. Same sounds that I just produced for you. And sure enough, this calf sounds off. My wife's about 30 to 40 yards in front of me. And I'm waving at my wife. I said, watch this. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to bring this calf in. And the reason why I started playing with this is because, and this is really when I like tuned in to like, man, this is that playground. Can I bring that calf to come to my playground? And sure enough, I hit that calf with some calf sounds because kids love playing with kids. I hit them with some calf sounds and that calf comes running. And that calf sounded like this in that scenario. It sounded just like this. And that calf was like, hey, I want to play. I want to play. So the calf comes running past me and goes completely out of view, but I can hear the calf maybe gets past me maybe a hundred yards. I can still hear this calf like, where you at? Where you at? And so I, I wave at my wife again. I said, watch this. We'll have some fun. And I bring this calf right back in and that calf, and they're so curious. Because they really haven't figured out like, like the troubles out there in the woods. And we, we as hunters are some of those troubles or some of those predators that, that, that mom and dad are looking out for them to stay away from. And they learn this later on, but they don't learn this within that first year. But that's what make this, makes these sounds deadly. So I bring this calf right back in and... This calf comes directly to my wife and literally touches her arm. And my wife was like, oh, my God. Now, this was a yearling, and this calf was probably born, born a little early and was a lot bigger than just normal calves. Because now, I mean, I, I even seen pictures on my cameras that I have set that some of these calves still have, have uh, spots. And those calves were probably born late. Now, if you see those calves uh, that are hanging out with mom that are almost the size of mom, those calves were born, born early, but they still sound like those kids, and those are your yearlings. If you want to hit to the next slide, and then we'll go into the cow sounds. Now, as I said before, I know I'm kind of moving through this, and I'm going to 
covered this the best of my ability. Please write down all your questions and, and shoot them to Will, and we'll 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 try to answer these at the very end. But um, these the, every sound that you make in the woods derives off a of cow sound. It starts from that mastering those those mosquito sounds. And then going into your elongated sound, your elongated mosquito sounds. What I'm doing is I'm taking pressure with my tongue over that latex. And I'm making that mosquito sound. And then I'm drawing it out and I'm dropping it off at the end. But once again, all these sounds can be done with open reads or internal stuff that's built out. Those calf sounds, they could be done with simple tools. The same with those open reads. So I'm not trying to miss anybody. And if you, you, you can't use a diaphragm, you still can make these same sounds with open reads or, or those internal reads, those hoochie mama squeeze reads or whatever you may use as a tool. And remember, all these are just tools to help you successful in the woods. So those open reads, you can do the same thing as calf sounds and cow sounds. But to, to go back a little bit, those calf sounds, they just have a little bit more nasally sound. And I love that when those bulls cannot, I cannot get those bulls to talk and I know they're in there. So I like to use some of those tools and I keep them in my bag all the time because you never know what is going to work out there. Now going back to those that mosquito sound and then dropping it off for your cow sounds and then elongating that to go into your location bugles because that's all it is, is a cow sound elongated. But taking that tongue pressure and putting it against that to make that mosquito sound making that mosquito sound, and then making it a little bit drawn out to drop my tongue off that with a little bit more air pressure so I can get that cow sound. And that cow sound sounds like this. Now cows make a lot of different sounds. Man, I have a ton of videos of them making so many different sounds. But in order for us to be able to make those sounds, we still have to master that mosquito sound. And then, then we have to drop it off and make that little bit mature sound. And that's going to come from your diaphragm and then a little bit more air pressure. As I said before, tongue pressure across that latex with air coming across. Make sure you don't have that hissing sound and carry it over and drop it off once again that cow sound the basic cow sound sounds like this and if you notice in the woods and some of you not to in, 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 insult anybody's intelligence but a lot of you might have some experience out there in the elk woods and if you watch these elk they their mouth is open at all times when they're calling they never really have their mouth closed because that sound has to carry it's just like if we're talking to each other our mouth is open so that sound carries so that maybe will can hear me or you guys can hear me on the zoom meeting now because if i'm trying to talk with my mouth closed you couldn't hear me. So their mouth is always open. The biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they try to, to make these sounds with their mouth closed. And it kind of sounds like this. And it's so hard for me to do because I'm not used to it. But I'm going to try to do my best demonstration of me trying to make a cow sound with my mouth closed. You just, it doesn't sound realistic and it doesn't carry and resonate through the woods. Um, so 
Open your mouth when you're making these calls. The same goes for open reads. The reason why it's called an open read is because it's open. And if we close it, and I'm gonna close, I'm gonna close this read off. And I'm gonna close the bottom of it, and I'm gonna make these sounds. Those sounds are good, but it resonates through that tube, so it's a lot louder than it would be if I closed my mouth. So all these cows and calves, their mouth is open when they're making these sounds. Once again, to go back and recap just a little bit, those calf sounds are cow sounds cut in half. And those cow sounds are more mature, adding a little bit more voice. Now, I say this because if you realize, like, when you get, you hit, your kids hit that puberty, their voice starts dropping, it's the same way as an adult elk. They go to those stages too. Humanize all this. Humanize all this, and you will be successful in the woods. So that cow sounds like this. And then that mosquito sound dropped off with a little bit of your voice added into that. To, to separate yourself from everybody else, you just want to be as realistic as possible and humanize all of this. If you can go to the next slide, Will. Okay, we're going to talk about calf and cow communication. Remember what I said when you're talking talking to your daughter or your son and you're telling them would you shut up please we'll be there in a second and then they saying well mom well mom that's that cow and calf communication and they're just talking to each other and they're just saying hey where are you at because they may be away from each other and they can't see each other and they always are communicating because remember they have to survive in some of the harshest elements and they have to deal with predators year in and year out. And all mom wants to do is make sure that her daughter or her son is in safe area and nothing's taking advantage of them. Because I know we've all seen videos where, you know, maybe a black bear jumps on a calf and you'll hear that calf screaming, and then mom comes running. Well, that's that kid that fell in the playground and bumped their head and is screaming bloody murdy like, Aah! it's the same, humanize all this. It's the same concept, but this time, some kind of predator jumped on them, right? Or... They have ventured off a little further than mom, I mean, a little further away from mom, and they're saying, hey, mom, where you at? So, if you can add that realistic sound of that cow sound and that calf sound together, then you have that, that talking point between that calf and that cow sound. Once again, that, cow, that, that calf sound sounds like this. That cow sound with a little bit of our voice added into it for that maturity sound. And now I'm going to communicate and act like two different elk. That calf and cow communication could be some of the deadliest calls in the woods, especially when you're talking about messing with a herd of different uh, cows and calves. So this is that cow and calf communication. It sounds like this. And that's that calf saying, hey, mom, where you at? And she says, hey, I'm over here. Everything's copacetic, we're good. Calm down. Now, it could be on the flip side of what I just said, and that calf ventured 
way away from mom, a little too far, and maybe he's he or she is asking, Mom, where you at? Where you at? And then mom answers back. So that calf may sound something like this. That's that calf saying, Mom, where you at? And then mom answers back a little louder and tells baby, it's okay, I'm over here. So if you mix the two of them together, it kind of sounds like this. This is that baby that ventured away from that mom. And that's mom talking to baby, it's okay. You could do those same different sounds with the open reads and you just have to be realistic to it. So you can have a couple different reads. What I will recommend is, listen, this is not Duck Dynasty and you don't need a bunch of open reads, but if you go back and you probably Google Jermaine Hodge, L. Hunton, you'll see me back in the day with a duck lanyard full of these open, I mean, open reads. And I used to have to hold them against my chest as I'm running through trying to cut the distance because they banging together making all kinds of noise. I would tell you this, just have one or two open reads with you uh, and, and that should do enough for you. You really don't need a, a variety of a bunch of different open reads because you can make the same sounds with just one open read. So I'm going to use the mini, mini estras and this call can make calf sounds and cow sounds. And we're going to do the same demonstration as mom, baby ventured away from mom. And mom says, it's okay, I'm over here. So this is that baby saying, Mom, where you at? And this is mom saying, it's okay. And you notice that it has that nasally sound. That's what it's supposed to sound like. And uh, I, that's what I love about open reads because they have that nasally sound. It sounds so realistic. If you sound, if you hear some of those cows out there, they have a, they have a yeah sound, and that that's what open reads really do for you versus a diaphragm. But you can still make all those sounds, and I think you can make all those sounds with a, a diaphragm a little bit better. But sometimes to trick some of those big bulls, you got to use those open reads. So once again, that cow and calf communications with the open read. Mom talking to baby, baby talking to mom, and that could be deadly in the woods. So remember, mom is always trying to protect her baby. And then usually when she's taught all her baby that all she knows, and then, then the baby kind of ventures off and does her own thing or his own thing, uh, especially after they become over a year, year old. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide. Okay, now, as I said before, those cows make a lot of different sounds. And one of those unique sounds is that estrus scream or that estrus buzz. And to me, based off of all the years that I've been hunting, watching elk, and I want to give you a, a, a quick demo, or not a quick demo, but a quick scenario of like the best lessons that can be learned is always going to be in the woods. But if you can't get out to like these elk woods and you, you just don't have elk around you and you're coming out to, to hunt elk out west or wherever it may be, understand that like elk communicate in different fashions and it can mean different things at different times. So with this estrus scream or estrus buzz, which is a lot harder call to master, it means only two things to me. And I've heard it during off season when cows, cows and calves and young bulls, those spikes are run, they, they're going through the woods and those lead cows, 
they do this on the off season and usually they do this and they tell in the the herd hey we're moving this direction let's go and then those that the rest of the herd knows hey the, the hey the alpha is moving and understand you're always going to have like a alpha cow like a dominant cow and she's always going to lead the herd to a safe direction or bedding area or wherever it may be, water, food, and all that other. And I usually hear this sound during the off season when that lead cow is, is talking to the herd and telling those cows, we're moving this direction. Also on the flip side of things, during the heat of the rut, is you'll have this estrus scream or estrus you know, buzz You'll, you'll have those cows and, and they hit this, this estrus scream and they're talking to the bulls saying that I'm ready to be checked or I'm ready to be bred. Now, what makes this call difficult to make is that it's multitasking. I have to take this cow sound and I have to make a eh sound and I do that with my voice some some people do it with their lips <clears throat> with a buzz but I find it more realistic when I do it with my vocal cords and that sound and to practice that eh sound all you gotta do is eh, without any diaphragm in my mouth eh, and all I'm doing is adding that eh sound but I don't want to get this confused with making some kind of EO or E sound. It's just a Ugh. And I'm growling with my voice as I'm making that cow sound. The difficult thing about it is multitasking. Multitasking is man invented, human invented where we have all these different things in life that we're trying to get done and usually we make mistakes and that's what makes multitasking hard because I could get I could tell you right now that multitasking for me is a no-go but if I have one thing I have five things in that day that I need to get done and I task each thing one at a time with the most priority to the, the least priority, I'm usually successful. But now we got to add two things or three things into the pot. And remember, you got to make that cow sound. And now I got to add a voice into it and carry that cow sound. And that's what makes this difficult. So with that being said, I'm going to make that cow sound and I'm going to add that yeah sound. Sounds like this. As I said before, it only really means two things in my opinion, and I've only heard it twice. It's that lead cow telling the herd we're going this way, or that cow that's ready to be bred or ready to be checked during the heat of the rut. Again, that voice added to it with the cow sound. has that voice, that yeah sound with that cow sound. It's very, very difficult. And you don't really need to know this sound to be successful in the woods, but it could separate you from somebody else in the woods, especially when you're talking to a herd of, you know, maybe four or five different bulls with satellites in there. And you want to pull in because Listen, we, we're, we're, we're not all ch chasing trophies. We want to fill the freezer. At the very end of the day, I can't eat the tags. I can't eat the horn. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a big fan of elk meat. And if there's, some, there's no elk meat in my freezer, I'm missing out that year. Uh, so uh, a lot of us that, that come out of state and hunt these states, it's, it could be upwards $1,200 for a non-resident tag. So maybe I just need something extra
to separate myself from everybody else in those woods. But you got to add that voice in there with that cow sound in order for you to be able to make that extra scream or that extra buzz. Um, but very, very difficult sound to make. I would say this, master your calf and cow sounds before you even try to tackle those extra screams or the extra buzz. And cows can make all, all kinds of sounds. They could even bugle. It just doesn't sound as deep and gnarly as those bulls sound when they bugle. If that makes any sense to anybody. Um, but very, very difficult. And I would probably put that on my list of one of the last calls that I try to master before my cow and calf sounds. You can move to the next one. And give me a second because uh, as you get, you know, start talking and calling, uh, you get a little parched. And, and I'm going to have a beer because I had a long day. So I'm going to have a sip of my beer and. And, uh, and, and keep talking as we go. Hopefully everybody can resonate with me, but if you don't drink, it's okay. Grab some water, take a drink. You got your bush lattes there? Um, no, I got, um, uh, this one is the Voodoo Ranger. And I, I don't drink a lot of the Voodoo Rangers, um, but I, I like some IPAs every now and then. Uh, they're, they're very tasty. They, they uh, the Voodoo Rangers get, get a little sweet, but uh, they're a little... They, they are tasty. You have one or two of them, you're, you're good to go. Don't mess with the 9% because 9% had me swinging. Um, so understand that you don't have to be a master at utilizing, you know, just a diaphragm because you could do the same sounds. I, I haven't, even to today, I really can't make that estrus buzz with those um, uh, open reeds, but those estrus buzzes don't always have to be a buzz. It could be a wavy estrus sound, and it kind of sounds like this through the open reed to kind of go back so I, I don't forget anybody that, that can't use a diaphragm. So those wavy estrus sounds, they sound like this through the open reed. It's just a carried on note that's that estrus sound. Uh, sometimes when I'm trying to confuse those those bulls and, and convince them, I just carry that note a little longer and I add a little wave into that note. So if you take a, you know, like a, mus a mu musician and they have those notes, it's the same way with the open read, but I just wave that note. And that's pretty much like an extra scream or, or extra buzz done through an open read without that yeah sound. Uh, but I haven't mastered that with an open read. Uh, but you just don't, you don't really need that if you want to make that extra kind of sound during the heat of the rut or any time of the year. Um, as I said before, uh, these, the, these calls all derive off of a cow sound. Now, when you're going into a location bugle, that location bugle is just an elongated cow sound, and then you drop it off at the end. So we, we talked about making that mosquito sound, that calf sound, and now we've gotten to the point where we've mastered that cow sound. Cow sound through the open ring, Cow sound through your diaphragm. As you can hear, that, that nasally sound versus that crisp and clean sound. Now what I want to do is I want to take that cow sound and elongate that cow sound. I'm, take, I'm, a, I'm a musician now. I'm going to take that cow sound and I'm going to elongate that. And remember, I'm taking my tongue off that latex at the very end and I'm dropping it off. So without, without a tube, it kind of sounds like this. And don't worry about kind of mastering like your tone. You're just mastering 
elongate neck cow sound, drop it off at the end because all those bulls do is they drop it off at the end. And if if any of you guys kind of, you know, ladies, guys, uh, if, you, if you guys heard, and, and the guys mean the universal, uh, if, if you ever heard like those duck callers on competition, they go, me, 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 and they go forever on those, those hail calls. Listen, I've never heard a duck ever sound like that. And I, I'm not a master duck hunter, but I do know that a duck does not do that. It's the same way as a, as a, a location bugle. You don't have to go long and beyond just a nice even note and drop it off at the end. Once again, carry that cow sound, drop it off at the end, and we're gonna magnify that through a tube. Sounds like this. Now, if you notice, I've added a little voice at the end of that. And that's that mature bull sound. You don't have to sound like that in the woods, but I want to be, I want to separate myself from everybody else. I want it to be as realistic as possible. So at the end, I add a little bit of my voice at the end of that. And I'm adding that growl. Now, if you're trying to, if you're trying to mimic that sound, and we're always trying to mimic and not overpower the bulls that we're trying to get the sound off. As I said before, there's stair steps to this. Calf sounds, cow sounds, cow and calf communication. And now we've gotten to our point where a location bugle. So if I got into a scenario where I don't even know what's in the area, the last thing, and if you remember back when I was talking about yelling, it's as if I'm talking to you right now, and I don't know where you are in the room, and I say, hey, where you at? You don't want to do that. You want to start off with your calf sounds and work your way up and stair step your way up. Too many times I hear nothing in the woods, and all of a sudden, you hear a screaming bull, which is probably you, that didn't start off with that calf sound. So when you get up to the edge of a, and you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a scenario. You get up to an edge, and it drops off into a good basin, and you don't know, you haven't went into those woods, and you don't know if that bull is 100, 150 yards from you. The last thing you want to do is yell through your tube and say, Hey, where you at? It doesn't work like that. You want to start off with that calf sound and work your way up. So, as we talk about location bugles, this is not the first sound that you want to make leading into this scenario, going into trying to find those bulls in that particular drainage or wherever you are. I always start off with those cow sounds or those calf sounds because you don't know if that bull is only 100 or 150 yards from you because if you go out there screaming at him, he may take off and leave because you have intimidated him or you started off so loud and you're yelling it in his ear. I don't want to talk like this to you guys. I want to start off soft and then lead up and escalate into that. So, it's just a cow sound and I elongate it and drop it off. Once again, those bull sounds sound like this. Those location bulls without the two. <coughs> drop it off at the end. You magnify it through a tube, and then you have your location uh, location sounds, and it sounds like this. A 
Again, I'm adding a little voice at the end of it, but you don't have to do that. You could sound like a wimpy bull, which would sound like this. <coughs> nothing big at the very end, nothing growly at the very end, and you drop it off. Remember this too, is if you get a bull to sound off, you never really want to overpower him. You're taking his temperature. If he sounds off back to you and you're trying to locate him, because at the very end of the day, a location, a location bugle is just saying, hey, where are you at? I'm yelling from one side to the other saying, I know you're over there, but I can't hear you. I'm saying hello, and I wanted to see if somebody's in there. Also, I want you to remember this and humanize this, is most of the bulls, they, they're bachelored up during the summer months, and they're hanging out with each other. Let's just say you got five buddies that have been hanging out with each other year in and year out for the most part throughout the whole summer you have high school kids that hang out with each other <clears throat> and i'm gonna use this as humanizing this you have a high school group that hangs out with each other you got my son will's son you got a bunch of people just hanging out with each other they start knowing each other's voice because they talk all year long now as the testosterone builds and they're starting to this time time of the year and they start venturing away from each other they don't really go too far away from each other but they go far enough where they may say man let me phone a friend or let me talk let me see if my buddy's close and all they're doing is saying hey Tom where you at hey Bob where you at and that bull might answer back and saying hey I'm over here not too far from you. And that's humanizing all this. But when you get that new kid at the play, I mean, at the high school that comes in, and everybody has experienced this. And if you haven't experienced this, maybe you're lost in the world. And uh, maybe you come from a small town that everybody hangs out with each other and, and no one moves from that town. But uh, for me, being, you know, I, I traveled the world and knowing that. Uh, we always have these these new kids that come to to the high school, and and usually that kid comes in. Everybody wants to check him out, and that's that kid. He's talking in the hallway, and he might have a different voice. And then you're like, who is that new kid? Humanize this. It's the same way. As if you were hanging out with your buddies for a long time and you were in the high school and you heard a new voice. Usually that dominant bull or that curious bull is always going to talk back and saying, who are you? And that's him greeting you or, or that's her greeting you. And, and it may be in a violent way. It may not be in a violent way. But they may be just saying, wow. There's somebody new in town. And that's all we're doing is we're bringing that new high school kid to a new, a new place. And we're introducing yourself to the surrounding herd that's there. Once again, cow sound elongated. And all I'm saying, hey, this is that new kid. Or hey, hello, everybody. Elongate that cow sound through your tube. To magnify that sound, it sounds like this. And notice that I didn't get crazy with it and super long like that duck call, that hail that went on for ye I mean, went on for ages on stage. Because I'm not trying to press anybody on stage. I'm just trying to fool that bull. Elongate that cow sound drop it off at the end you can add a little bit of voice into it to make it a little bit more realistic sounds like this with the voice added to the end oh. 
and I'm hitting that high pitched sound that resonates through their ears and dropping it off with my own voice. Just basically saying, hey, I'm over here. If you want to go to the next slide. Yeah, what's now, that whistle? Now, now, we're starting to talk about like harder to do sounds. And these are those chuckles, and those chuckles will separate you from Adam and Eve in the woods. And especially when you hunt some of those OTC units, and those chuckles are a cadence. And that cadence, and, and I, I resonate with this, and I use this as a tool for me when I'm doing these chuckles. All it is is a cow sound chopped in half with a cadence. Now, in order to stay in that cadence, you have to resonate this with something. Of course, I'm retired military. I just retired in April. And when I started trying to master those, those chuckles, I had to stay in a cadence. And if, you, if you've ever watched like any kind of military, it doesn't really matter. They, they, they have a cadence, whether it's left, right, left, right. It's a cadence to keep everybody in step. And, and if you tell them, if you, you're, you're marching, you're marching your squad or your, your platoon down this road, and in order to keep them in step and in, in sound uniform, you have to make a cadence. So, I tell everybody, if, you, if, you, if you're not military, it's okay, but just use a cadence, left, right, left, right. And that cadence is to keep it in step. Now, those cow sounds, those cow sounds are chopped in half with a cadence. So I'm gonna chop that cow sound in half. And that cow sound sounds like this. And all I'm doing is dropping my tongue off before I finish that cow sound to make that cadence. Remember, left, right, left, right. And if you keep that cadence, you're going to separate yourself between everybody else in the woods. Because what gives everybody away, the most thing that gives everybody away, it doesn't really matter whoever's in the crowd right now that signed up and listened to this, What's going to give you a way between you and me is usually your your chuckles. And I'm going to hit you with a location bugle and you're going to locate back. And your location bugle sounds great. And you might even fool me. But then when I chuckle back, you are going to give yourself away if you can't master these chuckles. Now, I want to also talk about like that location to that chuckle. We just got talk, we just talked about that location. All I'm doing is that location bugle to that chuckle. But in order to add that chuckle in, we have to master that chuckle first. Now, with that cow sound chopped in half, all I'm doing is taking that cow sound, chop it in half, and adding a cadence. It's gonna sound like this without the tube. And then when you add it through that tube, it sounds realistic because all I'm doing is amplifying that sound to resonate over. It sounds like this. Now you notice I faded it off at the end. It's because I found that a lot of bulls, they, 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 they'll fade off at the end, and you you rarely even hear the very end of it. But I've also heard bulls where they've been, they've chuckled and bugled all night last that night, and sometimes all they do is move their mouth. They're trying to chuckle, but their voice is so hoarse that they can't make the sound anymore because they've done this all night. And you'll see this, especially when you get a big herd 
and they've been bugling and chuckling between each other. It's crazy. It's super crazy. You can see them move their mouth, and you know that they're chuckling, but they can't, you can't hear anything because they're so hoarse. Or they, yeah, and it sounds crazy. I will tell you this. Just like you or me, it's insane that when you're talking to somebody, and even my voice is different than Will's voice or any anybody else that's on this Zoom meeting, your voice is always going to be different than mine, and mine's going to be distinctive from yours. That's, that goes back to kind of what I was saying when you had those kids at high school that are hanging out with each other. They know each other's voice. So if they were on the phone, they would know exactly who they're talking to for the most part um, because they've been around them. They've been hanging out with each other. Now we introduce the different voice so they know that's a new kid that's at that school. It's the same way with the chuckles, but you have to keep that cadence in order to make those chuckles. Once you amplify that through the tube, that's when you separate yourself. And it's very hard to do, and it takes a little bit of practice, but I will tell you is if there's three calls that you wanna master, at the end of all this, your calf sounds, your cow sounds, and your location bugle will get bulls killed year in, or cows killed year in and year out if you know those three calls. And then you take those three calls and then you practice and practice and practice in order to get your chuckles. Your chuckles are very hard, but with practice, you too can sound like myself as well. Once again, cow sound chopped in half, add, add that cadence, left, right, left, right. Quick story real quick is, I think Dirk talked about it <laughs> on a podcast of his. I didn't hear it yet, but I just heard it from, from the grapevine that he had spoke about it. But when I'm doing these chuckles, it's an exhale with an inhale. Now, try not to have too many drinks when you're doing this. I'm going to give you my story, and hopefully you, you get a good laugh at this. But I was using uh, Dirk's fa famous Maverick call. Uh, of course, I'm using uh, the All-American Series by Phelps Game Calls, my, my call, design designed by me, but built by Phelps, and, um, but I was using the Maverick at the time, and it was the only Maverick that I had, and my whole family calls all the time, and I'm going to tell you that I was trying to, I had a few drinks, and I, I, you know, I was a little, you know, a little tipsy, probably shouldn't have had, so don't have drinks and try to do this, but you want to make sure that you get a good seal at the top of your mouth because I'm, I'm not trying to do this with one voice. I'm doing this, I'm exhaling, and I'm inhaling. And that's that cadence that I'm talking about. So when you're inhaling, you got to make sure that that call is seated to the top of your mouth because it, it just won't sound right. So when you're inhaling, well, sure enough, I'm trying to explain to my wife and I'm over-exaggerating. In the call, in the call, and I'm saying, babe, you got to inhale and exit. And when I inhaled, I think the alcohol in that call made that call drop off the top of my mouth. And when I inhaled, it shot down my throat. So I was choking for a couple minutes. Uh, not a couple minutes. A couple minutes. I probably passed out, you know. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, blocking off my airway, but it was caught. And I knew I tried to cough and cough and cough and get it up. And uh, I couldn't get it up. And I thought, hey, babe, uh, give me some water so I can flush this down. And uh, I got some water and I flushed it down. And, and I, was, I was mad as fire because that was my only uh, maverick at the time. And his, by all means, Dirk's calls sound amazing. And uh, I'm probably not better than the Hodge call, but it definitely sounds amazing. And... <laughs> Anyways, I think it's in the Walmart sewage plant somewhere. Uh, I, I, I seen it because I had to use the bathroom that morning. Anyways, do not have some drinks and try to do this. But you want a good seal at the top of your mouth. And you have to inhale and exhale. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to demonstrate that. Even though I had a few drinks, 
uh, I'm going to inhale and exhale with this call just so you get that cadence. And that's that exhale and inhale through the tube once again. Inhale and exhale. Make sure you don't have a few drinks so you don't fly down your throat. Um, go, going a step further, uh, we, we, we've started mastering. We cut that cow sound in half. We mastered that, that chuckle. Now I want to add that location bugle. Remember, it's stair steps through this. I don't go to the woods, start chuckling. I don't do that. I'm building up. So I did that location bugle because I'm that new kid in the play, I mean, at the, at the school. Now I don't have their attention, but I'm going to start chuckling to tell them, I know you're over there. You need to talk to me. And that's that chuckle at the end. And that chuckle could mean a couple different things. Usually that chuckle is he's super excited or he wants to fight. And once you add that location bugle, that elongated cow sound, with that chuckle at the end, that's that excited new kid talking about, why won't nobody play with me? Or why won't you talk to me? Humanize this, all right? So take that elongated cow sound, drop it off at the end, you add the cadence of the chuckle, and merge all of these together, and it's going to sound like this through, without the tube. <laughs> with the tube, I'm amplifying all this. Sounds like this. Once again, that's the new kid speaking out saying, I know somebody wants to play, or I know you're over there. Just talk to me. Or you're getting a little excited because some actions happen in that school. Humanize all this. If you want to go to the next slide. Okay, those grunts are elongated chuckles. That's all they are. So I said this before, that cadence. That's that left, right, left, right. But all I'm doing is I'm taking that left, elongating that left, and elongating that right. Left, right, left. And this to me, and this could be, this is my opinion. Most of the time when I hear these grunts is you have a bull that's displaying to cows of how dominant he is, or he's courting to those ladies. And all it is is elongated I mean, uh, chuckles. Elongate that sound. Left, right, left. And it's the same thing, but I'm elongating the chuckles. Kind of sounds like this without the tube. <coughs> and usually in the woods, I usually hear this when you have that dominant bull courting to the females in or he's displaying to the ladies or telling the guys I'm the baddest thing here don't you even try this um, so once again your chuckles I want to do the chuckles and I want to do the, the the grunts side by side so you can hear the difference so your chuckles your grunts you could hear the difference it's an elongated sound now I said you're gonna build up to this point 
Now, when you're doing grunts, you're going to keep your cow sound a little longer and then drop your tongue off that. But it's still an inhale and an exhale doing this grunt sound. Now, when you add a location bugle with your grunts, now you have that bull according to his females or displaying, I am better than you are, and I'm the biggest dude here in this high school. Humanize all this. Location bugle to grunts. It's elongated and dropped off at the end. And when you pop your tongue off the top of that, you'll hear thuk, a thuk sound. That's that realistic sound. It's very, very, very hard to mimic. Now listen, we're not going to sound exactly like these bulls. There's no way that we can sound exactly like them. All we're trying to do is mimic them as good as possible. And I said this before that we don't want to really overpower these bulls, but we want to try to keep it at their level and then drop it off. When I'm doing a location bugle and he locates back and I cut that distance down and I make calf sounds and cow sounds to relocate him. So let's say he's 500 yards away. And we move in that location because he, he located back, said, I'm not very familiar with that sound, but dude, I'm over here. And you cut that distance in half, and you're using all your checker wind, and you're using the, you know, the best of the terrain possible to move into that location. And you don't want to start off with your location bugle again. Start off with your calf sounds, because he might be right on top of you. But. Remember this, whatever sound he sounds off to, it's more than likely the sound that he's going to respond back to again. Because if he likes that sound, don't change what you're doing. So as I step into these, this stair step, and this is a stair step to, to success. If I start off with a calf sound, And he sounds off to that. I'm not even going to the chuckles, grunts, or anything else. I'm going to stay with that. I'm going to cut the distance. And I'm going to start off with calf sounds again. But there's a golden rule to this. It's because if he's five, 600 yards away, he locates to your location bugle. I'm not going that close. And I'm not going to yell at him. I'm going to start off with calf sounds again. Because he may be cutting a distance towards you too. But don't yell at him. Start off soft and then escalate up. Once again, before I get past the grunts, I want you guys to understand that those grunts are elongated cadence. Left, right, left. And I want you to hear again the difference between the chuckles and the grunts. The chuckles sound like this. And you can hear how tight that cadence is. And then you add the grunts in there. It's elongated cadence all you have. Now, remember, calf, cow, cow, calf communication, location bugle, location to a chuckle, and then the very last one I'm going to do is location to a grunt, and then I might go into so what we're going to go to next would be, next slide, is your lip balls. And your lip balls are some of your most difficult sounds to make. As I said before, those estrus screams and those estrus buzzes, 
It's a multitasking thing. And with that lip ball, it's very hard for people to do too many things at once and do them perfectly. Now what I want to do is I want to take that cow sound. I'm going to take that cow sound, elongate that cow sound, and I'm going to buzz my lips without any diaphragm in my mouth. Without any diaphragm in my mouth, it sounds like this with my lips. You know how human eyes is. You, you, you have a newborn kid, maybe, you know, newborn to one years old. And you always like to take and, and, and tickle their belly. I've I done that with my kids all the time because it just kept them laughing. And you just want to entertain them. It's the same process. But I'm just buzzing my lips against their belly to keep them laughing because I thought that was the most beautiful thing in the world. But, uh, and, and they say, <laughs> they laugh all the time. But it's the same process. But all I'm doing is buzzing my lips. Once again, <clears throat> but what, what makes this hard is I got to carry this cow sound with that elongated cow sound with the buzz of my lips. Now, without the tube, it sounds like this. I take that location bugle and I buzz my lips and drop it off at the end. And when you magnify this, this is that bull that is this plain really, really hard, or he's he's fired up and He's telling, I'm the man. And that's that dude that came in the club ready to fight or ready to steal everybody's woman, right? You, you really just got to humanize this. And let me back up a little bit before I go too deep. Because I I love the way, like, I'm, I stole this a little bit. But I say I stole this. He said it first. But I've always thought this. Imagine you are at a frat party in college. And at this party, there's one male, but there's a ton of females. The last thing you really want to do is bring a bunch of dudes to a party that a bunch of females are at and try to capitalize to steal one of these ladies now there's a time and place for all this and i would say this if you have one bull at this party of hurt this herd or this club that you're going to and you go to the club and you pop in one evening and you notice that there's a bunch of females but only one dude there or two dudes there then the next day, you're like, hey, guys, we're all going to go to this party and try to, you know, get these females. Well, it usually doesn't work out very well for you or your buddy because you've brought a bunch of testosterone to this party. Now, I'm going to use Will as an example. Will's at this frat party with a bunch of his females, and we'll just say 12 females at this party. And I pop in by myself, I'm probably going to be very successful to pull a few of those females to me. What which you talking about? Turn, go ahead. What you talking about? Well, which in turns, you know, Will had like 12 of these females by himself. But if I bring a bunch of dudes to the party, it becomes a lot difficult to to possibly pull some of these females because Will's the man. He's got all these females, but now we got a bunch of different dudes in there. You just got to humanize all this and make it the best way you can. Now, Will has 12 females at this party. I show up to the party and I bring a bunch of ladies to the party. But Will, at that point, he only brought one other dude with him, 
that particular weekend and I brought 12 more females. Usually I'm probably this is this is new ground to him. He's never seen these females. So now Will is interested and he comes into play. That's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to humanize all this. Joe Turner explains it best. You don't want to go into the bar yelling at people uh, because usually you put their back to the wall. They're either going to fight, number one, or they're going to run away. Uh, but I've always thought this without really saying it. And then Joe Turner said it best. Uh, he, he, he made a great example of this. And I think it's his background as a police officer that really, like, he could, he could really relate to that. But you just have to humanize this. And that makes that very, very good. But before we go on, that lip ball is done with the lips and carried on cow sound. And when you do that and you add that location bugle to, to that, then you have that location to that lip ball. Sounds again like this. Without the tube. <laughs> And again, it's very, very difficult to make this sound, but this, this is one of those sounds that I would probably put on the back end of trying to learn and master because you only need three calls to be successful. Calf, cow, calf and cow communication, and your location bugle. And if you can do those, you'll be successful year in and year out. But if you can master these calls, especially when that bull is lip balling at you, you might be able to fool him to think, you know what, I'm better than you, and I'm bigger than you. And that might pull that big monster 330, 340-inch bull into your lap, that bull of a lifetime that you're looking for, to fool him to say, well, dude, I know he ain't better than me, and I'm going over there to check him, and then he gives you the shot of an opportunity or a lifetime. So, location bugle to that lip ball, drop it off at the end, and you could even add those chuckles too. And it sounds like this. <laughs> and that's that full spectrum of those bull sounds that you're looking for. But don't have to sound like that to be successful because at the end of the day, I could probably say 90% of y'all just want to be successful in the woods, in the elk woods, and want to notch a tag. So you don't need these sounds, but if you want to practice these sounds, you got to buzz your lips and you got to add that cow sound. Very, very difficult sound to make because you have to do too many things at once. But if you can master these sounds, you can separate yourself between everybody else in the woods. Hey, I want to take a minute and, and recap. Those cow sounds, I mean those calf sounds are cow sounds chopped in half. You can do them with the open read. You can do those calf sounds with uh, tools like the Easy Sucker. I love this Easy Sucker because... I call it the, the, the seal the deal. Seal the deal. You moved in real close. And this is a very quiet sound. It might sound a little loud on the, the, the mic, but it's very soft. <coughs> so you can make those calf sounds and, and, and those cow sounds with those tools. But with the diaphragm, seated to the top of your mouth, cow sound cut in half for your cow, calf sounds. That calf, don't shut up. That's that kid in the back. And then you have those cow sounds. That's elongated, a little bit more mature sound. And then you have cow and calf communication. That's mom and baby talking to each other. 
you have those estrus screams or estrus buzzes that you could do and it isn't it's so much of a buzz with your but it's just a nasally sound that has a wave with your open reeds <coughs> don't get too carried away but once again lip pressure over the reed gives you that little bit of sound and I'm just lip using the pressure of my lips to make that wavy sound and that could be that estrus estrus sound that you're looking for but you can also do that with your diaphragm and all I'm doing is adding my voice in that once again it's that cat, I mean that cow moving that herd, or she's ready to be checked or bred. It drives bulls nuts, especially the, during the heat of the rut. Um, then you have that elongated cow sound to your location bugle without the tube. I drop it off at the end, add a little bit of my voice to make it realistic with the tube to amplify that sound. <coughs> Growl at the end, make it realistic. Then you have your chuckles, and that's that left right cadence. And that left right cadence, remember. I'm military, so I associate it with, I say I'm military, I'm out now, but left, right, left, right. And that's that cow sound cut in half with a cadence. Left, right, left, right. Inhale, exhale, inhale. So the, the left is my exhale, the inhale is my right. Without, without the tube, sounds like this. With the tube sounds like this. And then you have that location bugle to those chuckles to make it a little bit more realistic. Remember, I'm yelling, hey, I know somebody's out there. I want to play. And then you have those grunts. That's that left and that right. That bull displaying to the cows or in or according to them. Sounds like this. And it's elongated, elongated sounds, I mean elongated cadence. And that's all it is. Now, I say that, and I really want to talk about, like, your easy bugler. And you still, remember I said three sounds that you you really need to be able to master is your, your calf sounds, your cow and calf sounds, and your location bugle. Now, there's a lot of tools on the market that, that you can make, I mean, that they make. Uh, this particular one is the... V2 tube that has a pop-off lip if you like to use a diaphragm, but if you don't like to use diaphragm or it messes you up, you just pop some of these on. Uh, Primos makes some, Slayer makes some, Phelps makes a good one. And all you're doing is, is utilizing your lip pressure over this just to make that, that high-pitched sound. Sometimes, listen, you could shut a car door. And if you're in the right place, that bull sounds off to a car door, a squeaky car door. Weep, that door squeaks and they bugle. Make, but if you if you get that to happen, I promise you, you should be going in there killing a bull or killing something that, that evening or morning because they are fired up. But if I could just make that, that bull sound. <laughs> That 
that's that high pitch sound that they're looking for because it just resonates through their ears and it sounds familiar and believe it or not at a distance it's familiar enough to get them to sound off and then if you can't use a diaphragm you move into that location you seal the deal with the open read or easy sucker man i've killed tons of bulls just doing that alone while I was in my younger younger days just trying to fill the freezer and be successful. So there's different tools on the market that you can use. I think I got an, another slide talking about barks. Do I, Will? Okay. Those cow barks and those calf barks, I'm going to make this make this pretty fast. What are we looking like on time frame, Will? Say so we're just about at the end. I'm gonna announce the giveaway winners that we have the prize pack from Stealth Cam. Uh, you got Phelps to throw in some stuff as well, in addition to some other awesome brands as well. So that will be right after this, and then we'll flow into a Q&A session. Perfect. Listen, if you got a question, stay on, and I'm gonna do my best. I know some of these are a little lengthy, and uh, I'm, I'm doing my best to, to cover all these sounds for you guys. And if you can master these sounds, and, and I, I can help in any way to help you be uh, successful in these elk woods, especially for those non-residents or residents that are that been out here for year in and year out trying to be successful and they failed and failed and failed. Because at the very end, humanize all this. In life, sometimes you need help. And if you don't ask or attend stuff like this, you will fail more than you would succeed. And regardless, I feel year in and year out when it comes to elk because they have the ability to know exactly where you are at all times. And I don't know why it is. They are very, very smart animals and they have to be. So going into these barks, these barks, all they are is a cow sound, just sharp cow sound dropped off at the end. And when you hear this sound in the woods, and a lot of you that haven't heard this sound, it's very eerie and it'll make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up because it's like, wow, what was that? Now, it's two, di two different barks. You got your cow barks and you got your bull barks. If you are around a herd and that cow barks, it's probably over. But all you can do is bark back and calm the herd down if that's a cow barking. Now, if you get the bull barking, it can mean two different things. He's alerting, warning the herd around him, or he is saying, I've come all this way, you show yourself because I should be seeing something by now. Now, if that's the case, and you've worked this bull to a certain point, and he gets to a hang-up point, and he knows he should see you by now, he's going to bark at you. And if he barks at you, it doesn't mean that the game is over. You just need to know how to bark back. And then... Maybe you could add a bark chuckle into that to really mess his head up. So that bark is a sharp cow sound dropped off. So without the tube, it sounds like this. And it's my, my tongue with a lot of pressure and a lot of air, and I drop it off sharply. But then when you throw it through the tube, you sound like a bull bark. And if you heard me make that stutter, that's them trying to make that second bark with no more air in their lungs because they shoot it out so fast. They lost a little bit of that. They wanted to do a double bark, but they get that uh sound at the end. Again, Sounds like this. Ow. Ow. 
Now, if you work the bull and he gets to the location that he should be seeing you, he may bark at you. Right then, immediately, you need to grab your bugle tube and bark back at him or just use your diaphragm to bark back at him. Another good example to use a bark at, at him is when you're trying to get him to stop. So I've done this a lot of times because that bull is walking and he's trying to get to where your location was. And your location might have been 40, 50 yards back when you was calling. And he's moving towards that location. Everybody's like, you should cow sound. A lot of times when I was making these sounds, these cow sounds, they would move past my shooting window. And it wouldn't allow me to shoot them because then they stopped behind a tree. But before... He got to that window. I knew immediately without my tube, what I would do is I would have a diaphragm in my mouth and I would bark at him because what it does is it stops them and they start, they, they look because it's that alert system. So when he's coming through that window, I'd bark at him before he got, before he got to Past that window, I barked at him. Sounds like this without the tube. <laughs> and I just yell at him. And he stops perfectly where you want him to stop. Because it alerts them. Oh, what was that? And by then, the shot placement is over with. And you have him in your window. But sometimes when you're... They tell you the cow sound. I've had bulls I tried to cow sound at, and they walk past my window. And then next thing you know, he's hung up behind a tree, and I can't make the shot that I want. And then I got to look at the next window. So utilize these barks to help you make those shot placements and, and those opportunities for you to be able to do that. But it's a sharp sound. It's a sharp cow sound dropped off at the end. Sounds like this to the two. Once again, show yourself or it's that cow. And that cow is not as deep as that bull. It's different, but it's similar. If that cow barks, the best thing you can do is bark back and calm the herd down. Get away from there and slowly work your way back into the herd because she's alerting that herd and that herd's usually probably going to venture off. But if it's the bull, he could be, you could be working that bull and that bull could be coming in and he just doesn't see you. Now, another one to add into that is the bark chuckle, especially when you... We're talking about that bull. He barked and said, show yourself. A lot of times I'll bark at him and I'll chuckle, which sounds like this. I'm telling that bull, no, you show yourself. I'm pissed that you even came close to my territory. And that works amazingly because they could be staring right in your direction, and the next thing you know, they start pacing back and forth because they're confused. I'm playing chess. I'm playing with their head. Remember, the game of elk hunting, period, is all about the game of check. I mean chess, not checkers. This ain't jumping back and forth. I really strategically need to play him because... If you're going to be successful in the woods, yes, we can call we can call in raghorn bulls all all the all time all the time. But they still are pretty savvy. But to fool some of those bigger bulls, it becomes difficult because you've worked them to a certain point and he barks at you. He hung up in that magic window or that place where he can see you and he's like 
I don't see anything, I'm going to bark. And I'm telling you to show yourself. I just chuck, bark back and chuckle back at him. And I'm playing with his head. Because now he thinks it's really a bull. And he may pa pace or he may just come on in. Once again, bark chuckle. And that might be just enough to give you that shot opportunity that you're looking for. I think that covers all of our calls, Will. That does, man. That covers it all, dude. You did a freaking awesome job, like always. So I'll get give you a little bit of time to wet your whistle before we get hot and heavy in a rapid-fire Q&A session. But what I'm about to do right now, I'm going to pick three... Lucky winners who've stuck around through the giveaway and what we're given. Jermaine was able to get some Phelps calls for three of you lucky winners. You're going to be getting his All-American prize pack, or not prize pack, All-American pack. You'll get a Phelps bugle tube. We've got a rangefinder from Halo, Poseidon headlamp from Cyclops. You're going to get this SOG Ether FX knife, which Jermaine and I both put to use this past fall on a couple of bulls. And it's a perfect nice. knife taken in the backcountry. Uh, we're going to give a Tenzig pack, day pack. So if you got a heavy, you know, you got a camp, you're just going in early or, you know, just may not even have to use it for elk hunting, whatever you want to use it for. We're going to throw that to you in addition to a brand new Stealth Cam Revolver 360, six cameras in one. So you're going to be getting a pretty freaking awesome prize pack out of this in our three lucky winners, which we will be emailing you. I'll send you an email to get some information from you so we can get that prize pack to you. The three lucky winners are Tyler George, Jared Fowler, and Mike Morris. So congrats, congrats guys. Y'all won a heck of a prize pack to be taken out this fall. And thanks for sticking around and sticking through us with just a little bit of that technical difficulty. And just remember for all of y'all that stuck through tonight, I'm gonna be sending a code to get you all Whitetail Pro for a year for free. So you're going to get that if you didn't win the prize pack. But what we're going to get into next, for those that are going to stick around, we're going to do a quick rapid-fire Q&A session. I know we're a little bit long on time, but we're going to get right into a nice Q&A. Hey, hey, Will, uh, before, you, before we go into the uh, like Q&A, hey, I, I want you all to, to know that uh, Phelps came out with a uh, new All-American series, and these calls are amazing. Uh, made by three world champs. And if you haven't had the chance to check out that video, we cut a video last year in Idaho and we we were success. Oh, I was successful, but we, we were all <laughs> successful. We called in quite a few bulls, but, but more so we just wanted to tell the story because we, we had three world champs come together. Me, my buddy Eric and Tony, and Tony's the reigning, he's, he's the 2024 world uh, professional world champ this year and mm -hmm. uh it, it was amazing project working with these guys and if you're looking for new calls and uh diaphragms wise uh go check out the all american series because uh from from what i hear of course my myself it's it's an amazing call but you have three different titans of latex and eric's is a little lighter than ours with a tight stretch Mine's like a medium with a tight stretch, and then Eric's is uh, heavy with a with a tight stretch. So you'll get three in one pack. Uh, it's worth the money, and it's 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 worth worth you investing into. And then, like I said, all these calls are amazing. Just just go check them out, man. And I gotta say, I've been using it as well, and I freaking love the Hodge call, man. Not that I'm biased or anything. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it, man. All right. So we'll run through some of these. We got quite a few questions, actually. Not only we got uh, some some that came through the chat session here, but also had some of y'all that asked questions prior when you signed up. So I'm going to hit as many of these as I can. We're just going to run through them, Jermaine. Well, All right. hold on. Before you start, listen, if we don't get to your question, you can uh, – you can DM me on Instagram, and I will do my best to answer those questions if we don't get to your questions. Absolutely. All right. You ready, man? Yep. 
All right, we got Nathaniel Melton. Public land with some pressure. What calls are you going to start with, and which calls would you avoid? Okay, so first and foremost, especially like I give, I I, I like to give like Colorado. Um, Colorado is like one of the heaviest hunted states, um, especially because we have the most population of elk, and we have a lot of uh otc opportunities for non-residents so you get a lot of these units that have a ton of pressure in my in my opinion the best cause that you could possibly master that will separate you is, is your calf sounds your cow sounds and your location bugle you don't really need anything else other than those three, but the very best calls to make to be successful is your cow and calf sounds because sometimes you have bulls in there that are just quiet. And if you just get in there and start making some cow and calf sounds, but you better be ready because they've had so much pressure and they're curious and, and they want to come in. But when you get to start screaming at them and stuff like that, like, like uh, we, we call it the Doug Flutie. I mean, Dirk, Dirk lo I love that little skit with him and Dusty, uh, the Doug Flutie moment. Mm -hmm. When you have when you have these Doug Fluties out there, every time they go out, those bulls get very familiar with those calls. But if you just hit them with some calf and cow sounds, simple calls but be ready be ready because a lot of times when i'm making those sounds those those curious satellite bulls that are hanging out in the area they come in quiet and all you're going to hear is like a tree a, a, a stick break or an antler rub against the tree as they're coming through you just have to be ready because i've done this i know and it's called call Cold calling sequences. When you set up those cold calling sequences, man, if you're not ready, plenty of opportunities will come and pass if you're not ready because they will sneak in. They're 800 and something pound turkeys sneaking in on you. And if you're not ready, they will come in on you. Cow and calf sounds, heavy pressure units work the best. We got another one from Robert King. When working a herd bull with cows, you bugling or you cow calling? Both. Both. But depends on the situation. I'm going to give you a story real quick. Robert King, you said? Yep. Uh, so, Robert, I'm going to give you a situation. I was in this particular unit in Colorado. It's a heavy pressure unit. We found this bull. He was at almost... He was at tree line, and when I got him to answer, he answered with a location bugle. I moved in. This is some years back. I moved in. I had a particular hunter that I, I had with me, and I'm not a guy by no means. It's just a good friend of mine. And I had him answer to a location bugle, and then I'm like, why is this bull not moving? I didn't know that he had a bunch of cows with him. And he was the only bull with those cows. He had like seven to ten cows. And then I changed up to a, a cow sound. It ruined everything. Remember what I said when I was talking about the seminar is that if he answered that call, he's probably going to answer that same call and that's worked for him. So stay with those same calls. But what I will tell you is that if I had stayed with a location bugle to, to get him enticed, I probably would have pulled that bull in away from those cows. But I went to a cow sound, and sure enough, the lead cow, the lead cow was like, no, I don't want no competition. She, she took the herd away, and the bull followed. 
But if I would have had stayed with that that location bugle slash chuckle, I probably would have enticed that bull to come in. He was only shoot maybe two hundred yards away from us. Mm -hmm. But I, I I'm gonna tell you right now, stay with what works and what he fired off at, and don't change from that. Hopefully that answered that question. Yeah, I think it answered it perfectly because. I had a, a similar situation. I did the same thing. Herd bull came with a bunch of cows. Cow took them away from me. Yeah. We got one from Brian Miller. Um, how do you know if you're calling too much? There's no such thing. I don't care. It's no such thing. You hear all these people, you bugle too much. Well, listen, I'm here to interact with these vocal animals. And for me, for me, they're vocal all year long, and I'm just trying to get a response. And if they're not in that particular area and don't want to respond, I move ground and I go cover other ground till I get that particular animal that want um, that elk that wants to respond, and then we can play the game. But calling too much—that's crazy. If you I mean, Will knows if if you've ever been out in the elk woods with myself, I'm talking all the time because these animals talk year in and year out. Yeah. It's the same way. Believe it or not, I know you know a lot of the crowd here has turkey hunted. Turkey turkeys talk year in and year out. The 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 toms don't gobble all the time. They do gobble, but they don't gobble all the time. But those hands, they purring and they they talking. Yip, yip, yip. They talking. Mm -hmm. Cows and calves and bulls talk year long. And I'm gonna give you. Uh, well, I got a I got a good video, uh, not a video, but a picture of a bull. And it's on one of my cameras, and you can see him. He's heading in one direction, and he turns. I think this picture was in June. He turns and his mouth is open. He's bugling. He's bugling. Or he's making sounds because he's not just yawning. He is making sounds. He heard something and he made sounds. Mm -hmm. They talk year in and year out. They they bugle, and but they don't act like they are in a rut, of course. But same with turkeys. Mm -hmm. They don't act like they are in a rut. No, they don't do that all year long. They do that during the rut. So you'll hear them talk all year long. And I gave that example of me going on in November. The rut was completely over and that bull bugled because he was like, hey, I'm over here. So don't worry about whether you're calling too much or whatever. If they're not talking, move. Find the bull, find the bulls and cows that want to talk. Well, it's like last year, you know, we went second season over the counter, mm -hmm. Colorado, and we weren't necessarily going out there to call to get them to respond back. It's more or less just trying to locate them like you're talking. Okay. And remember that morning we found that bachelor group. And that, was that, like, that one of you called? Yeah, I don't even, I wouldn't even, I, was that a bugle? I don't even know what that was. It was a bugle. It was a bugle. And he, he just saying, Hey, we over here. Mm -hmm. That's all he was saying. And, and that was like a blizzard. He was like, yeah. hey, we're over here. Come on, hang out. That's all he was saying. That's all he was saying. All right. Here, here, here's a good one from Charlie Lone. What do you do when you have bulls bugling from multiple directions? Is there any way to judge a herd bull from another herd bull or a herd bull? from the satellites um you, usually your satellites are a lot a lot less oh don't don't get it messed up mm -hmm. your, your satellites you you would think a satellite but everybody's voice is different so when i hear multiple bulls bugling in different directions i usually go after one of them because it's like a kid in a candy store we're the kids like choosing what candy we want. So choose a bull, usually the bull that's more vocal 
is the one that I'm going to go after. And it may not be the bull you want, yeah. but I choose that particular bull that's more vocal and I go after those bulls because they're more excited. As I said before, I'm just taking the temperature of these bulls. If that bull is vocal and he's vocal all the time, go after that bull and don't target the one that just sounded off one time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going after the bull that kept sounding off. So that's the direction I'm ahead. Of course, using the wind in my favor. But uh, yes, you're a kid in a candy store and you have bulls going nuts all the time. And I'm going to tell you, target the bull that's the one that's the most vocal because that's the one you're going to have the most fun with. Rocky Garrison, he asked, as a turkey hunter here in the south, we tend to try to call toms past the hunter to a caller. I'm guessing this might work with elk as well, but in real life, is there a minimum distance that the caller should set up beyond the hunter? And he stated he's going bow hunting for his first elk hunt on September 2nd. Perfect. I, I'm guessing that he's going to Colorado because September 2nd is Colorado. Yep. So, um, so with that being said, listen, um, state that, st state that question again. Cause I got lost my time frame of thought. I had it, I had it going. So he's a turkey hunter from the South. Oh, they turkey hunting, yeah. Yeah. With the, with the hunt. Is he going with a buddy? I'm guessing. Guess, going yeah. With yeah. Yeah. Going with okay. the, they're okay. going to have a caller hunter situation. So that okay. whole half moon thing, Th those are the best situations because, uh, a solo hunter is going to have a m more difficult time than a, and then than than a hunter hunter part of the situation. So, listen, 30 50 yards is like the minimum. Sometimes I have to back up from my hunter even further. Even further depending on the terrain and depending on the unit. Here in Colorado, there's a lot of different terrain. I mean, you can go an hour in the terrain changes. What I will tell you is that when you're you're call, I mean, you you have a caller. I usually set my caller usually right around that thirty to fifty mark past me, just to pull him. But he's exactly right. They're exactly like turkey. I need to pull him past my caller in a situation where I know that that's his open lane. I'm going to set up in this situation using the wind in my favor, and I'm going to pull him into a, uh, the, the shooter situation. If you haven't seen this hunt, it's called Operation Bugle. It's under um, Phelps Game Calls. It's a it's a hunt that we we worked on, and I, I hunted this particular unit, but I passed up a few bulls, and I ended up killing a bull that, uh, you know, I'm happy with, by all means, three to four-year-old bull. But uh, I pass up some bigger bulls. But in this situation, I had my buddy Pat Latrell, which is, you know, two-time world champ. Mm -hmm. And I had him 30, 30 to 40 yards set up. I told him where to set up. And I set up in a good hang-up window lo location. And that bull came up and went basically straight to my window and stopped. And when he stopped... He gave me the perfect opportunity to shoot him because he was looking for my buddy Pat. So 30 to 50 yards is like my magic window. Sometimes I have to go further to entice some of those satellite bulls or those herd bulls to come into that window. Hopefully that answers the question. But yes, it's a lot like what he stated. You have to pull him past the shooter. Absolutely. Here's a good one. Um... Because, I mean, I, I think every first-time elk hunter runs across us, and I think we have some first-timers that haven't gone yet. Um, what do you do if a bull responds to your locator call? I know we've all been there before. Like, you actually rip one out, and you get one to answer back, and you're like, huh, I don't know what to do now. First, first thing I do is I pinpoint where that call came from. I check my wind. And I use the wind to my advantage to cover ground, depending on how far he is. If he's two, three hundred yards away, I'm like, okay, I need to get to this point, and I'm using, you know, hunt stand app. I'm using my app tools 
to say, okay, he's here. I'm covering that ground. Utilize your tools. I'm covering this ground. It sounds like he's only a couple hundred yards away. I'll measure that distance. And then I kind of use that to my advantage. Checking the wind, moving that direction. I'm going to cover about a hundred to whatever the distance is. And then he responded to your location bugle. Start off with your calf sounds. But it's probably only going to respond to that location bugle. Hit him with the location bugle. He responds. That might be enough to get him to pull in. I like it. Let's see. He went over that one already. Man, I think that about covers it for the night. We had ourselves a heck of a class, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate everybody, you know, showing up for the class. And thanks thanks for having having me on. I mean, uh, of course, uh, anything that I could pass along. If, if you had a question that didn't get answered, please, mm -hmm. you can look me up on Jermaine Hodge underscore Colorado and DM me and ask me these questions uh, on, on, on DM, and I'll, I'll do my best to answer those questions for you guys. I know, good job. I know, I know a, a lot of people who are coming from out of state to come hunt some of mm -hmm. these Western states, Colorado, Utah, uh, you know, Wyoming, wherever, Montana, Oregon, Nevada, Arizona, all these big hunting, elk hunting states. If you have a question that you want to try to get answered, I will do my best to get to you. It might not be right away, but I, I will get to you. Um, but hey, listen, just like in life, sometimes we need a helping hand and I'm more than welcome to help help you guys out because at the very end of the day, it's all about filling the freezer full of great meat and, and the opportunity to come out and hunt uh, such an amazing animal. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, like getting your hands on your first one, it's, it's a life changing experience. I know it was yeah. for me, man. I know it was. Well, Jermaine, appreciate your time tonight. Just want to thank all the attendees tonight for hopping on and congratulations again to our winners and then expect an email with a code for a year free of hunt stand pro whitetail in the upcoming days. And uh, if you want to see the film that where Jermaine and I down two elk in two days, it's called Coach. You can head to the Hunt Stand YouTube channel, check that out. And uh, this has been recorded, so if you want to go back and listen in on some of the stuff that Jermaine brought to you with the calls and everything, I'm going to get this up on our YouTube channel uh, within the following days as well. So thanks again for everybody for tuning in tonight. Hey, thanks everybody.